Hi, I'm Sean. I'm Rhonda. Hey, we're excited to be with you today to talk about some neat things that we're seeing in the, in the Word in, in Malachi chapter 3. Yeah, we're excited to get to start doing some more and more Bible studies with you all. So in Malachi chapter 2 and verse 13, he says, This you have done again, covering the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping, with crying, and so much that he doesn't regard the offering, your offering anymore, or receive it at goodwill at your hand. And then they said, why? And he says, because the Lord has been a witness between you and the wife of your youth against whom you have dealt treacherously, but she is your companion and the wife of your covenant. You know, one thing that I'm <laughs> noticing there, God isn't paying any attention to this person's offering that they're giving because of the way that they're treating their wife. Can you imagine that there's something that's hindering God's reception of what we would offer to Him? You know, this person <laughs> is wanting God to notice them. I want you to see me. I want you to pay attention to what I'm doing and what I'm giving. But he said, I can't see what you're doing and giving. I can't give you any attention over that because you're not treating your wife right. He says, the Lord has been a witness between you and your wife. And to me, that is saying, you know, God's watching. He's seeing what's going on. Yeah. And, it, and it is creating mm -hmm. um, a sense of awareness that I need to watch how I'm treating my wife. Do we stop and think God's watching everything I do? He's watching every heart motive, every intention. And He knows. He's not oblivious to what we think and feel. He's not oblivious to what we're doing but I think so many couples don't realize what they're doing to their spouse. You know, it, it gives you the picture reading that whole passage that um, the wife was, 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 he said, he was talking about covering the altar of the Lord with tears. Well, I mean, guess whose tears those were? It wasn't, it wasn't the husband's tears. It was the wife's tears. In other words, there was some stuff that was really weighing heavily on her so much that she was crying out and, and God's looking at that. And you've got that oppressor and the oppressed kind of mm. situation going on here. And obviously, you know, yeah, that sounds pretty extreme. And you might say, oh, I'm not doing that. But but what if it's in a lesser scale, right? Yeah, you know, I interact with a lot of women that are struggling in the marriage. And we know that men struggle too, but that's not the topic of what we're talking about right, today. Right. They're crying. Their hearts are broken because they are dismissed. They are invisible. Their husband does not see them. He's basically trying to force them into a mold of who he is. Hmm. And that's not a godly thing. There's two contributing. Isn't that the challenge that's really being faced in marriages is where uh, one or both are having a difficult time accepting the perspective of somebody different than themselves? You know, what if a man is frustrated with the tears? <clears throat> what mm. if sometimes she cries in front of him? Mm. But tears are an expression of something. Yeah. Something's happening inside. And guess what? Where we house Holy Spirit, sometimes he doesn't see those tears. Mm. But she's weeping. She's grieving. And Holy Spirit is also grieved. And this is what he's talking about here is God is seeing a spouse weeping at his altar. To me, I think of that as she's coming before God. She's crying out in pain and agony, emotional and spiritual pain and agony. Hmm. He may not be physically abusing her. No. He may he may or may not be verbally and emotionally abuse, abusing her, though that might also be in the picture. But the thing is, why is she crying? <laughs> she, she realizes something's missing that ought to be present in a marriage yeah. relationship. But you know, with the teaching of the man being the head of the house and so many people warping what God said about that, mm -hmm. twisting it to a worldly, worldly angle to suit their own agendas, um, you know, you see a lot of households where he runs over her because he can just because he can. Yeah. And she's crying. She's not in a lot of those relationships. She's not a partner in decision making. Her, her voice is silenced. 
Even if he hears her, he doesn't necessarily seriously consider what she brought to the table. Right. Let's look at this um, word treacherously because he says, you know, God is, has been a witness between you and the wife of your youth against whom you've dealt treacherously. Now this word uh, treacherously, I'm trying to look where I wrote out the, oh, there it is, uh, to cover with a garment as part of it. So it's like this man that's dealing with her in a treacherous way or an unfaithful way is covering <clears throat> up the expression of his wife. He's throwing a cover over her mm -hmm. where she's not allowed to influence him. It's part of the definition of, of dealing treacherously is to act covertly, which is uh, something that's not openly acknowledged or displayed that's in a secret, secretly. If he is um, acting covertly toward his wife, he is not openly acknowledging her. Mm. He is not openly acknowledging I'm married. I mean, just think about that. You've got a married man that's not acting like he's married because he's totally <laughs> covering up the one that he's married to. He's covering <laughs> that Living over. Living like a single person. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, he's not acknowledging her input. You know, when somebody's doing something undercover, behind the scenes... Mm -hmm. Maybe he's making decisions behind the scenes yeah. without her input, yeah. independently, acting independently. Even the withdrawing that some men do, the pulling back is, is a way to control. He is acting like a single man under the guise of covenant, under the guise of marriage, but not behaving as if there really is a covenant, not understanding covenant. Yet is she your companion oh, and yeah. the wife of your covenant. Yeah. He doesn't understand relationship yeah. in this in this situation. Now, there may be times she doesn't, but here, he doesn't. He doesn't understand his role and her role, and he has it twisted. Having covenant isn't just, we agree to live under the same roof for the rest of our lives. <laughs> that <laughs> yeah. is not covenant. Yeah. Covenant is two people completely giving themselves to another. Yeah. Let's open up that word companion where he says, yet she is your companion, meaning a consort is a wife, husband, or companion, in particular the spouse of a reigning monarch. And so what have you thought of that you are married to someone and they're also reigning with you? You know, in Romans 8, he says that we're joint heirs, mm -hmm. it's being heirs together. Uh, in First Peter 3, he says, is heirs together of the grace of life. So we're both reigning together. He's saying, look at her. She's reigning yeah. with you. Mm -hmm. It's not just uh, you isolated alone. You know, and when you were saying that, uh, uh, this kind of a person, that makes the treachery part make yeah. more sense. Yeah, it does. The deposing of a, a rightful ruler. That's true. <laughs> God doesn't appreciate it. And that's pretty clear in well, this and chapter. That, this relationship, <laughs> right? The husband and wife relationship matters to God. It matters how you treat each other. Yeah. It matters to Him. All right. We just hope you got to see some things here that uh, you'll be able to take and Purify apply. Purify relationship. Yeah. To yeah. Take, take it up a notch.